I want to share a message with you as we begin it uh, from a scripture, Proverbs chapter 4. And Proverbs chapter 4, I concluded the sermon last Sunday, and then uh, Pastor Jennifer, my wife, got up, and she's backed up from my text and read a verse right here in Proverbs 4, and we're going to start with that scripture today. It fits in right where we want to go. Proverbs 4, verse 20 through 23. Let's read the scripture. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. I want to remind you, and then we'll get into further expounding on this for today's message, but I want to remind you that the heart, as Scripture uses that word mostly in the New Testament, is the center of something. It's the core of, or the center of the tree, the, the heart of the tree. The, how many love heart of, the, heart of palm? I don't know about you. I, I like heart of palm. And, and uh, um, uh, the heart, the center of something. And so our illustration here is, and we need you to know that Scripture makes it clear, we're a three-part being. We are spirit. We're soul. And we're body. We're spirit, we're soul, and we're body. We're a three part being. And when the heart word is used, in most cases, you could say it's the center of your being. And the reason that's so important is because a lot of times we've heard things about the heart and we've confused it with being the spirit of man. And we've emphasized, uh, do everything spiritual and everything else will be all right. But Jesus came to redeem us in all three parts of our person. So that we're not just a spiritual being and a miserable Christian, but we actually have the life of God flowing out of our heart like a well of living water. Jesus redeemed us. Our spirit is born again. Our soul is restored, and our bodies are healed. So that in the spiritual realm, in the emotional realm, and in the natural realm, God has done something for us through the finished work of Christ so that I don't have to live with a broken heart, but a whole heart. I don't have to live with hurt and pain and walls up. I can be healed in all three dimensions of my person and out of the center of my existence flow rivers of living water. This is what Jesus said. And that's where we ended the sermon last Sunday. What if the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the immersion of all three parts of our being? He takes all of me and immerses me in God himself. Because when I'm born again, my spirit is made brand new. Everything from heaven is put in me. The righteousness of God, I'm created in his image. My soul, how I many know we have pain in our soul? We've, we, things have happened in our life. There's natural pain, things, maybe we're facing a sickness or whatever it is, whatever it is in the natural realm. God, through Scripture, I believe it with all my heart, has not left one dimension. As, as Moses said to the Egyptians, when we come out of this bondage, we're not leaving one hoof behind. 
Pharaoh wanted them to leave some animals, leave some of their possessions, leave some of their things. And Moses said, no, no, no. When we come out of this mess, we're coming out of it with every hoof. We're coming out of here with everything. We're coming into the freedom of Christ, we would say. We're coming into the finished work of Jesus at the cross through his death, burial, and resurrection. We're coming into his work with all of me. All of me is coming in to the redemptive work of Christ. Let's pray over this scripture and this message. Father, we thank you for for this scripture that promises us that when we receive your word, it's life to those that find them, health to all our flesh. Thank you, God. We can keep this word, this truth in the midst of our heart. What you've provided is meant to be in the middle of us, affecting our spirit, our soul, and our body. I believe this morning as people hear the word, sin will be gone in the realm of the spirit. and The righteousness of God is imparted. People's emotional realm is healed and made whole and restored, and there's wholeness for us. And I believe even bodies will be healed as we're preaching and speaking today. That God, things in the natural won't keep us from that very well of living water that's flowing out of our heart in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? Amen. And you say, man, I, I, the, the message today, in case you're wondering, and we're, we're going we're gonna to repeat it over and over again, but it's called The Invitation. The Invitation. And it's the invitation to this place of wholeness. It's the invitation to this place of wholeness. And I, a story you've heard me use a number of times not so long ago, but it's the story of a child who is the offspring of Jonathan in the Old Testament. Jonathan and David, the king, the greatest king of Israel. We know David, um, he becomes king on, on the heels of Saul, who God removed from office and put David in as the king. And, and David had to, had to deal with the issues of, of what was going on and becoming the king. And this child, five years old, A nurse, his caretaker, knows David has become king, and as was the custom then, there was lots of lots of things. There were people who needed to be to be taken care of and killed. (laughs) And so they were just, you know, that's how it was then. And and there was lots of things that were going on. David was clearing the kingdom and all of this. And the nurse, the caretaker, hears, man, David is now king. And she needs to get this boy who is Jonathan's son to safety. So she grabs him up in her arms and she, she runs and is going to get him out of there so that at least the, somebody of Jonathan's kin is still going to be alive or Saul's kin is still going to be alive. And, and she runs and she, she, she or somehow in their flight, Mephibosheth is dropped. He falls, he trips. Probably the nurse drops him, and he becomes lame. They take him. Mephibosheth is taken, and he's taken to a place where they can hide, and they make their home in a place called Lodibar, a place in the wilderness, in the desert. And Lodibar, the name Lodibar means a dry place. A desert place. And so Mephibosheth is living there. And he's existing there as a lame person. He's living in a dry place. He's living in a desert. But unbeknownst to him, there's a king who's now taken authority, David. And David remembers, ah, I have a covenant with Jonathan. 
Jonathan, Saul's son, was my best friend. We, had a, we have a covenant. And he, he asks his servants, his people there, he says, Is there anybody that's still alive that is Jonathan's kin or Saul's kin? i got to show kindness. And he doesn't say, i just got to show any kindness. He says, i got to show the kindness of God. To these relatives, because... Uh, what's not really said, but he had a covenant with Jonathan. Oh, aren't you glad? Come on, let me just get ahead of myself a little bit. Aren't you glad that God is showing us kindness, not because we're worthy, but because he has a covenant with his own son, Jesus, and Jesus shed his own blood? My friend, God's kindness to us is not based on our worthiness. It is based on a king in heaven who remembers the covenant and says, i got to show them my goodness and my kindness because I love them. And so the king, the king sends down to a dry place an invitation. The invitation. But let's let's just for a moment let our emotions and our imagination go with this child Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth sees the sees the the destruction, the war, the I don't, I don't know what he might have seen. He's five years old, and they tell me from like three to eight years old, I mean, some of the greatest trauma and some of the greatest things that affect people's lives happen in those years. And there, we live our life if we are not healed. Uh, we live our life with walls up and all kinds of things, and we... We live in a dry place because of something that happened when we were five. It's well known, well documented, well studied that those are some of the most formative years in our psychology and our, even in our physiology, how our brains develop and all of that and how we remember things and what sticks with us and what we, what we, what we steer away from and and happens in those years. So we got little Mephibosheth, five years old, and not only does he, does he lose his family and has nobody but, a, but his caretaker to flee with him, but while he's fleeing, so can you imagine the mark of terror, the fear? I can relate to it a little bit because I, I was with my father when he was killed at eight years old on a tractor and I watched it all and then when it happened I I my brother who was 10 years older than I saved my life by God's grace and power and and uh, my father is is gone and but we're half a mile away from our house and my son my my son my my brother who's 10 years older runs and I remember, I don't remember much because the trauma, I think, just blocked that memory out. But what I do remember as I visited back to that is, is the, the, the absolute terror as I ran through the field by myself. Nobody was with me. Absolute terror as I, I can... I can now as I've looked back and people have helped me look back and thought, how has that affected my life? I realized, man, I ran by myself. I can, I, can, I can still see the tall grass and nobody's with me. My brother's gone. And I'm, I'm running. I'm running in terror. And nobody paid any attention to me because now ambulances are coming and all of this. And I'm an eight-year-old boy just left alone to deal with this terror by myself and Well, that's a little piece of my story. So I can relate to little Mephibosheth, who nobody, no family's with him. The nurse is taking him, and and the nurse is running. And not only is he fleeing with this, with just terror, what's going on, but he gets dropped. He gets dropped. And the physical pain... The, can you imagine now the terror? Now his legs are broken and he's broken. His body is broken. and he's, 
he's just broken. It's just broken. And they, they flee to Lodibar, and they're down there in a dry place in a desert, and they, they think they're safe. But the spiritual famine down there is so deep and so heavy and, and they're just living in this dusty place. And, and to me, that's a spiritual dryness because Mephibosheth doesn't know the covenant. Mephibosheth doesn't know the covenant. So he's down there even in a spiritual dry place because he doesn't know that up there at the throne, there's a covenant at work for him. Woo! Yes! Oh, oh excuse me. I forgot I'm in church. <laughs> uh, yes! He, he doesn't know there's a covenant at work up there at the throne. But here's this dry place, this brokenness. This brokenness. And then comes the, the invitation. Let, let's look. Two verses I'll read from the story. 2 Samuel chapter 4, verse 4. 2 Samuel 4, verse 4. Jonathan, Saul's son, had a son who was lame in his feet. He was five years old when the news about Saul and Jonathan came from Jezreel, and his nurse took him up and fled. And it happened as she made haste to flee that he fell and became lame. His name was Mephibosheth. I know there's a meaning to that name. I don't even know what it is. You probably do, but... He made his home in Lodibar, this dry place, this desert. But then a king sent an invitation to Mephibosheth. Second Samuel 9, <laughs> verse 11. Don't worry, this will get a lot lighter and better here in a few minutes. But you've got to know the pain people are in. You don't have to look far to know people are living in Lodibar. And so, 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse 11, Then Ziba said to the king, this is King David, According to all that my lord the king has commanded his servant, so will your servant do. As for Mephibosheth, said the king, he shall eat at my table like one of the king's sons. I want to read that again. As for Mephibosheth, said the king, he shall eat at my table like one of the king's sons. Oh, hallelujah, the invitation. He sent people down there to Lodibar, the king did, and said, go down there, find him, and tell him the king's calling for you. He wants you to come up to Jerusalem. He wants you to come to, he wants you to, come to the king's house. When he got there, the king introduced him to his place at the table. He said, you're not going to have to work for this position ever. The servants are going to take care of you. You'll never have to work for your food. The servants will take care of you. You'll never have to toil for this. This is about the king and the covenant. Mephibosheth is going to eat at the king's table like a king's son for the rest of his life. What an invitation. What an invitation. Mephibosheth, like so many people, because we're a three-part being and we're affected in all three areas of our being, and I'm, I am a spirit and a soul and a body. I'm not a spirit with a soul and live in a body. I am a spirit. I am a soul, and I am a body. And I'll be that way forever because Jesus redeemed me on all three levels. Thank God. And I can live 
with a river of living water coming out of the center of those three dimensions by bringing them all into coherence to the finished work of Christ. Come on. Come on. But like Mephibosheth, physical pain, we could say, I've suffered emotionally. Now I never allow relationships to be real in my life. And I just want everybody to know throughout my whole experience that my, my new address is, is Lodibar. I, I live in a dry place. I never have meaningful relationships because I never want to be hurt or broke like that again. So I just put up walls. And my new address emotionally is Lodabar. I, 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 something physical happened to me. Maybe as a child, uh, something naturally, something physically happened to me. And, and I just can't experience life. I, I don't know why I just have this perpetual sadness about me. And I just can't seem to break free. And, and I, just, I, just, I just need you to know my address now is, is, is Lodabar. A dry place. It's a desert. I, I, I'm comfortable here in Lodibar. I, I, I'm, I've adjusted and I live at this new address. My spirit's so broken because sin has taken its toll and original sin from Adam broke all of us. It, it hurt all of us, but then you put on top of that the, the fruit of sin that we live out because of that brokenness from Adam. And then our own sin breaks us even more. And we're broken in our own sin. And we're broken in our own darkness. And, and much of humanity has just said, well, there's no cure for it. We just live with the addictions to cover it up. And we just live with the pain. And we, we just learn to cope. And we just add all kinds of walls. And we're not really existing. We're, we're just dead people walking. And, and, and we, we just we live. And our address is, is Lodibar. Right? So we... we we adjust and people live not with Jesus' words from John chapter 7 that out of our heart flow rivers of living water. That happens because you receive the Spirit, not because you're perfect or because you were never broken, but because Jesus has made a provision that takes the brokenness, the shattered pieces, and makes them whole. He heals the brokenhearted. Brokenhearted means shattered or broken in pieces. And guess what healing means? Healing means wholeness. Bring it back to wholeness. God takes the pieces that want to splinter us, that have shattered in our life, and He brings us back to healing and makes us whole until out of the center of our being, out of our heart, flow rivers of living water. I don't have to make my address in Lodibar because the king has sent an invitation and said, let's change addresses. Let's change from Lodibar. Let's change from a dry place. Let's change from, from, from the desert. Let's change your address and let's put you in heavenly places seated with Christ in heaven put you up as a son a child of God an heir of God and a co-heir with Jesus Christ come on and eat at the table in the presence of your enemies the pain is 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 speaking to you but right in the presence of all the voices of physical pain of emotional pain of sin around us and our own failures right in the presence of my enemies what's talking against me come on and pull up to the invitation at the Lord's table and let surely goodness and mercy follow you all the days of your life because he wants to make us whole the invitation has been sent to Lodi Bar we got a new place for you to live it's in the king's house it's at the table prepared for you in the presence of your enemies let your pain howl out there on the hillside, but it's no longer with you because you're sitting. 
at the king's table. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. The king. From the king comes an invitation. Let's look at the New Testament scriptures. Luke 4, verse 18. I've quoted it already numbers of times, but let's read it here. Luke 4, verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Like I told you, brokenhearted means shattered and fragmented. But what's the promise? What's the invitation? The Lord, by God's Spirit, will heal. Will take the brokenness and make it wholeness. Heal. Make whole. The promise of God is clear. Let me just give you a couple scriptures on, on this. Psalm 147, verse 3. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. In Exodus 15, God wanted the children of Israel to know that I am the Lord who heals you. We often use these scriptures, you know, about physical healing. But I'll tell you, the word healing means wholeness. It's like God wants to be known as the one who brings wholeness to people. I am the Lord who heals you. And one of my favorite uh, psalms in the Old Testament in, in the book of Psalms is Psalm 103. And I know what a Psalm 103 says. Oh, yes, let's look at it here. Psalm 103, verse 1 through 5. Psalm 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Yeah, forget not all his benefits. Well, what are his benefits? Psalm 103, verse 3. Who forgives all your iniquities. See if you can see the three dimensions of the person here. All your iniquities, I made the righteousness of God in Christ. He forgives my iniquities, my sins, as far as the east is from the west. He'll remember them no more. Intentional divine amnesia. Yes, intentional, divine. When God says, I forget, don't you know God knows how to forget? Intentional forget. My spirit, corrupted by sin, is made brand new in the image of God. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Yeah, he forgives all my iniquities and heals all my diseases or brokenness verse 4 who redeems your life from destruction brokenness shatteredness who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies and satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles <laughs> satisfies your mouth with good things. How do you know your soul is restored? You can know by what comes out of your mouth. Man, I mean, if you struggle, if, uh, you know, I'm not supposed to preach at you. I'm supposed to preach with you. So if we struggle to smile, it's a good indication our soul's got problems. If we struggle with joy and laughter and happiness and, and words that are positive and blessing, it's a good indication our soul. He satisfies my mouth with good stuff. He fills my soul. He heals me in such a way that out of my mouth can flow life. <laughs> Come on, try it a little. If you haven't laughed all week, let's just do it right now. <laughs> yes! It feels good to laugh. It feels good to smile. It feels good to say positive things. We're blessed. We're free. We have God's blessing. 
We're full of joy. We're filled with the Holy Spirit. We're children of God. We're heirs of God. We're co-heirs with God. I'm a king's kid. Matter of fact, I am a king. He fills our mouth with good things. But you see it right here. Spirit, soul, and body. I want to tell you as we bring this to the most important part of the message. We're not left to ourselves to make the best out of this and just with willpower to try to make wholeness in our life. This wholeness is based on something solid. The ingredients of this healing cure were formulated in the eternal will of God. This cure was absolutely made by God in His eternal plan and His eternal will. And you could say that, I hope it's not too human to say this concoction, this medicine, this what God has put together to fix the human condition is very clear. It's mercy, grace, and goodness. Woo! Oh, Oh, hallelujah! Yes! Mercy, grace, and goodness. It's the, it's the, it's the mix. It's the cure. And it's not based in something that has no foundation or no real substance to, it is based right in the work of Christ. His mercy saves us from what we should receive. His mercy saves us from the judgment against sin, what what Jesus called the wrath of God, the displeasure of God against imperfection against unholiness, what what we should deserve through the work of Christ has released the healing potion of mercy. We don't get what we deserve. And then through the finished work of Christ, His death, burial, and resurrection, He has mixed into it for us grace. We get what we don't deserve. We get the blessing of God. We get the favor of God. We get lavished with the love of God. We get the blessings of God as a free gift. It's called grace. Mercy and grace. And the reason we get it is because of the goodness of God. It's His attitude and disposition toward us that wants to fix anything that is estranged from Him. It's the goodness of God. This threefold potion right from the cross, right from the resurrection, is the healing of all humanity. The the mercy, the, the grace, the goodness of God in our life and out of our heart flow rivers of living water because what was shattered by sin, what was shattered by emotional pain, what was broken with physical hurt and pain in our life, He has brought us to healing and wholeness by the mercy and the grace and the goodness of God until Psalm 23 says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Why is this potion, this eternal will of God, mixed up in God's eternal purpose? Mercy, grace, and goodness. All now in the finished work of Christ because Mephibosheth was broken just about every way you could break a person. I don't, there's not many stories in the Bible that ring of pain from childhood like Mephibosheth's story. But Jesus, 
was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Let's read it. Isaiah 53, verse 4 through 5. Can you handle a few more minutes as we close out today? Come on, this is the moment we have with God right here. Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5. Oh, surely, surely he has borne our griefs, carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. This is not some emotional trip. This is not just positive words. This is not just your willpower against your pain. This is a real provision from the Father God through the Son at Calvary that when Jesus was beaten, when Jesus was broken in every way you could you could break and beat a human being. He was broken until his spirit was so broken that he even cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He went to the deepest, darkest, driest Lodi bar a human being has ever gone. Physically emaciated until you can't recognize him. Soul in such anguish that he doesn't just stay awake all night like some people do with emotional anguish. He's in such emotional anguish, his body is dripping drops of blood. The pressure is so great. And it's not because he's got a problem. It's because he drank a cup in the Garden of Gethsemane called our problem. Our problem crushed him until you couldn't recognize his body, until his soul was in such anguish, his body dripped with hemorrhaging blood. His spirit became sin for us until he cried out, My God, my God, you've forsaken me. Every beat of the whip, every agony, every cry of pain, every exclamation of God's deserting him was mine and your pain. And somehow, in the eternal purpose and will of God that put together a potion of mercy, grace, and goodness. Those wounds healed our wounds. And Jesus was buried with the absolute desecration of man's broken condition. But it couldn't hold him because he was the spotless lamb. And he rose victorious over our brokenness, over our problem. He rose victorious because he took our pain, our sickness, our brokenness, our sin to the grave. And somehow in his wounds, somehow in his sacrifice, somehow in being the Lamb of God for us, when he was wounded for our transgressions, it became our healing. And now we can rise up and go, I've heard the invitation. I'm going to the king's house. I'm going to 
to live at the table prepared for me. Out of my heart is going to flow rivers of living water. I'm going to live while I live. I'm going to live in the life of God. I'm going to live with life more abundantly. I'm not going to live in Lodibar. I'm not going to change my address. I'm not going to live somewhere with walls around my brokenness. I'm going to respond to the king and I'm going to run to his table and I'm going to live in wholeness all the days of my life and for eternity. Jesus said it when he offered the communion. He said, this is my body. The risen Christ talking to Paul and giving him the communion said, this is what I said. This is my body which is broken for you. <laughs> you got to love somebody like that. You got to love somebody like that. We saw a little from Fibbesheth's pain and said, I'll take the pain. We saw the failure of Adam and said, I'll, I'll take the consequences. Put it on me. And in the eternal will of God, that will release mercy, grace, and goodness to everybody. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. An invitation to leave Lodibar. Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to heal the brokenhearted. The apostles in the book of Acts preached in hindsight and proclaimed Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and with power. Who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. The anointing is the ability of God affecting the vessel. When you accept the invitation, the ability of God, you can call it a miracle if you want to because it really is. God wants to come into our life, work a miracle in all three parts of our being. By his wounds, we are healed. By his wounds, we are healed. Let God's voice, through my voice, invite every person out of Lodi Bar tonight. Maybe your Lodi Bar is, you know what, you know, I've already preached it. Let my let my invitation be an invitation. Not just to be saved in the traditional sense of, well, I'm saved, I'm going to heaven. But a salvation that lets the center of your being flow with rivers of living water. of God to heal all brokenness. If you're watching online, come out of Lodi Bar. Come and sit at the king's table. Be filled with the Spirit of God. Live from a heart of Fullness, healing, and wholeness. If I didn't believe this with all my heart, 
I would stop preaching today. I would resign now. If I didn't believe with all my heart that the finished work of Christ heals the whole person, provides wholeness. More than a ticket just to heaven, it's a ticket to life. Live while you live and live eternally.